Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you something that I'm very passionate about. Um, I'm gonna be sharing with you about math because I'm a future math teacher. I really enjoy doing math. I love studying it. And I'm gonna show you something that's very fundamental to all mathematics. This is called the fundamental theory of arithmetic. And the fundamental theory of arithmetic states that for every number that is a natural number, it can be represented as a product of prime numbers. Now, product is when you take numbers and you multiply them, and prime numbers are, are numbers that can only be divided by one and themselves. So what I'm trying to say is that any number out there, 2, 7, 8, 42, 2,684, that can be represented by a unique set of multiplication of prime numbers. So, everyone follow along? Perfect. I can see you nodding. So, let's start. This up here at the top, it says, for every number which is greater than or equal to 2, there exists, for n, a product of prime numbers that is unique. That's what this p1 dot 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 pk. So the p represents a number that is prime times a bunch of other numbers that are prime. And that gives you n. For this proof, I'm going to be trying to prove it by contradicting itself. So I'm going to make the assumption that there is a letter or a number. And I'm going to represent that number by letter m. And I'm going to say that m does not have a product of prime numbers. M is also a set of the natural numbers, which means that it's not negative, it's not a decimal or a fraction or anything like that. It's just a natural number. So, for this group of numbers that we'll like, assume, hypothetically, do not have a representation of a product of powers, we'll say that M is the smallest of that group of numbers. Um, this is very important. Please remember that M is the smallest of this group of numbers. It comes into serious importance later in the proof. Something that we know from m is that we know m is a composite number. If m was not a composite number, that would mean that it's a prime number. If it was a prime number, well, then it would be easy to prove this um, proof because it would simply be m to the first power, and that is its product of prime numbers. So m cannot be a prime number, and so it has to be composite. If m is a composite number, we know that m is something times something else. So we're going to represent that something and something else by saying a and b. So m equals a times b, and a and b are also elements of the natural numbers. From this, because a and b are natural numbers, we know that a is less than m and b is less than m. Okay? Now, this is where things get tricky. If we know that m is the smallest of the group of numbers that cannot be represented by a product of prime numbers, we know that a and b have to be able to be represented by a product of prime numbers because they're both smaller than the smallest number in that group. So therefore, as you can see here, A equals a product of prime numbers, and B equals a different product of prime numbers. Okay? Everyone following? So we have two smaller numbers, and once we take those, because those numbers are smaller than the smallest number in the group that cannot be represented by product of prime numbers, we know they are products of prime numbers. So, from this information, we can see that a times b equals m. So we'll take a, which is this q product of primes over here, times b, which is this x product of primes over here. And does anyone know what happens when we multiply two products of primes? Anyone? Anyone? No? Okay. We get another product of prime numbers. Well, I thought that earlier in the proof we said a times b equals m, and m does not equal product of prime numbers. But lo and behold, we can see that product of primes times product of primes equals product of primes, which clearly here is the contradiction we are looking for. So from seeing this contradiction over here, we can prove that for every natural number out there, there is a representation of a product of primes. Now, right now, I can tell you're thinking to yourself, wow, I just sat through four minutes of absolute garbage that I'm going to forget in about five seconds. Or you've probably already forgotten it. I wouldn't really be surprised, but that's okay. One of the reasons that this is important to everyone is because math is a very fundamental concept for life. Everyone needs a little bit of math. No matter how much you might think that this type of math means nothing to you, this is the foundation for all other math. This is the foundation of prime numbers, and prime numbers are the building blocks of all math, okay? So, this is something you don't really have to know this type of setup with all the symbols and the words and the phrases, but this is essential to your life. And also, maybe next time someone calls you stupid, you just whoop this out of your back pocket. You say, hey, I know how to prove the fundamental theory of arithmetic. And they'll think to themselves, holy cow, this guy's really smart. So, think about that next time. Thank you very much for your time.